A question I get asked on a day-to-day -day basis is what do I use to refurbish my video games and how do I remove the scratches from the video games that I resell on eBay? Well, you guys are in luck because in today's video, I want to go ahead and take a couple games out of my huge pile of games that I got to fix and go step-by-step -step with you guys. And hopefully by the end of this, I should answer any sort of questions about refurbishing video games that you might have. So without a further ado, let's go ahead, get some games, and let's go over to the JFJ Easy Pro. All right, so I've chose three games, specifically these three, because they've got something wrong, and uh, these are just common situations that you might run into. So we're going to go ahead and start off with Modern Warfare 2. Now, if you are reselling video games, or you've just started reselling video games, or you think about getting into it, you will quickly notice that the Call of Duty titles are usually in the worst condition. Same thing with the Halo games. Uh, there are always millions of scratches on these guys. Uh, which is why I decided to have two Call of Duty titles in this one because, well, yeah, they're quite they're quite famous for being uh, super scratched up. But either way, let's go ahead and start off with Modern Warfare 2. Now, before we do anything, let's go ahead and take a look at the condition of the disc. We can go ahead and pop it out here. As you guys can see, this disc does not have any bad scratches. However, it does have this layer of fog on it. I personally like to remove it just because it makes the disc look cleaner and does have these really light scratches on disc as well, which I think is super important that we get rid of those and then we can hopefully get full price for Modern Warfare 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to use to remove these guys. Now, luckily, we have a machine here at the office that we can use. I have the JFJ Easy Pro. You guys have probably seen me make a bunch of videos about it. I've had a very positive and negative experience with it. So if you are looking to buy one, please watch until the end of the video because I will say a couple of disclaimers. But let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. So starting off, we're going to go ahead and turn on the power button. We have power, which is good. We're going to go ahead and open it up. Uh, mine is a mess, but please ignore that. So we have this back metal plate and... Because our buffing pads are actually quite thin, I do have brand new ones, uh, which will look a little bit like this, actually exactly like this, still in the bag. Uh, but I've been using some of my older ones just because they work quite well and there's still a little bit of, a, there's still a little bit left of them. So we're gonna go ahead and put the buffing pad right in there. And then I have this little contraption. So this is just uh, three pieces of, I believe just normal fabric. I go ahead and put it against the metal plate. Now, uh, different machines are going to be different, but for mine, this helps allow the disc to actually reach a very thin buffing pad, as well as it does create a layer between the metal disc and the uh, CD itself. Therefore, because the metal disc here does heat up after a while, it's going to you know make sure that this doesn't burn right through the buffing pad, as I think this one, yeah. Uh, as you guys can see the black marks, that's because this guy was so hot, it was heating up the disc, and then it was burning right through. So we're essentially just wasting uh, the buffing pad. We don't want to do that. So when you add a layer between the disc and the metal plate, you keep everything nice and cooled down. Uh, so yeah, after we've done that, we're going to go ahead and put the disc in, which is right up here. Of course, you want to make sure you put the disc in where the disc side is actually going to be facing you. Well, because that's essentially going to be refurbishing. You want to go ahead and make sure you put this uh, knob on it. Therefore, the disc won't fall out. Go ahead, screw it on like so. Uh, you don't want to screw it on too tight, otherwise you will crack the disc and we don't want that. But you want to make sure you screw it tight enough so that the disc won't, won't fall off when it's uh, when it's refurbishing. And then we have uh, the next decision we got to make. What compound are we going to be using? So with the GFJ AZ Pro, you get two. You get the number two compound and you get the number one compound. I am out. I'm almost out of the number one compound. So I will need to be purchasing more. Uh, I actually, I used this entire bottle and then now we're working on this one which is less than halfway done. Either way, we're gonna go ahead and use the number two compound. I mainly use this one. If I really wanna get a game to be as close and perfect as possible, I use the number one compound after I use the number two. But most of the times you won't even touch this stuff. It's just not worth the time. Either way, we're gonna go ahead, open this guy up, and then we're gonna put some compound on to the buffing pad. Now you wanna make sure you don't put too much. And as you can see, mine is already uh, exploding. So because it's like that, I'm gonna go ahead and just put in about that much is usually enough. Uh, if you have a brand new buffing pad, which I will maybe go into this video, what you do is you actually put uh, four dots on each side and you wanna make sure that the buffing pad gets nicely soaked in with the JFJ compound. It does take quite a bit and then you wanna go ahead and use an empty CD, not a video game, random CD, just make sure that you wear it in. And you're gonna end up doing this for about two, three times until the JFJ buffing pad is a little bit more worn in and then it'll probably start working without adding any more additional scratches to your game. Either way, 
uh, with for just normal used buffing pads, this will do the trick. You don't want to put too much because you're wasting compound, but you want to make sure you're putting enough so that it actually works. After that, make sure you go ahead, close this, and then you can go ahead, press the two minute mark, and we'll see you in two minutes. All right, so the GFJ just finished fixing up the game. We're going to go ahead, open up the machine, which is apparently more difficult than you think. As you guys can see, the buffing pad definitely did its job here. The compound spread quite nicely. We're going to go ahead and use a spray bottle, spray off the disc, and then we're going to go ahead and use this towel to wipe off all the water. And voila, it is done. As you guys can see, there is still a very, very little like that. The scratches you're seeing is just a very, very, very thin layer which is very, not noticeable unless you have this extremely powerful light that I'm using right here, uh, which most people don't actually look at. So yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, it's, it is very normal. But either way, as you guys can see, the disc is done. Perfectly uh, clean, it's nice and easy. And that fog layer is gone, so now the, just the disc looks so much cleaner. But you always wanna make sure you're testing these games after you furbish them, just in case you accidentally wipe it off. A data layer so to do that we're gonna go ahead turn on the 360 hook it up to the TU which I think it already is and then I play some uh, Modern Warfare 2 and boom we have Modern Warfare 2 in the console and it worked so we're gonna go ahead and take the game out and put it back in the disc and then this case is actually in good condition so it doesn't need to have any stickers removed luckily and we are ready to list this back onto eBay okay so next up we're gonna do Madden 07 uh, it does say Madden 09 but it is Madden 07 inside this case which I can open with one hand there we go we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the condition of the disc and then i'll tell you what we're working with okay so as you guys can see this disc definitely has a lot more scratches it's definitely in worse condition however this is more of what you're gonna find in most discs to be honest it's just this light layer of scratches on the top of the surface of the discs these are always super easy to remove, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, pop it into the JFJ Easy Pro and I'll show you what I would do. Now the process for this is exactly the same, just as the Modern Warfare 2 copy. We're gonna go ahead and use some of this number two polish and we'll see how much damage that does. And then if we're able to not remove any sort of scratches, I actually put you guys on the number one polish to show you what it does because even though this might not be a very expensive game on some of the more expensive games that you might want to have you know in a very good condition uh yeah this is probably worth a run so let's go ahead and take a look at the result now just as last time we're gonna go ahead and put the exact same amount because that seemed to be a very good amount to be putting oh make sure we don't waste anything we're gonna go ahead and just wipe it like that just a dot is plenty of compound and then just as last time pop it in for two minutes and I'll see you guys in two minutes. All right, so the GFJ just finished up furbishing the disc. We're gonna go ahead, uh, do this, and boom. As you guys can see, the buffing pad definitely did its work. So we're gonna go ahead and actually use the blue buffing pad that I have uh, somewhere. You guys can give me a minute to find it. And we're gonna go ahead and use this blue compound and we're gonna go ahead and see what the actual final product would look like just in case you guys are actually curious what would happen and well yeah so what you can do is actually leave the disc on but you do want to uh, switch buffing pads you do not want to be mixing compounds it's just not gonna it's not gonna work too well uh but yeah you don't want to clean this off just it's a waste of time so we're gonna go ahead and find the blue buffing pad and i will get back to you all right after a quick search we found the blue buffing pad luckily so i only use this buffing pad for the number one compound it really should be called number two because you use this one second i don't know what jfj was thinking um clearly it must have been the same person who made the, uh, the backplate metal uh, either way we're gonna go ahead and use the same amount oh that's actually too much but either way around uh, you should probably put less than that actually but that should be uh plenty of jfj compound for this so it is the blue compound so you only want to use it for one minute not two uh, otherwise uh, yeah you're just gonna damage the disc maybe it, yeah you want to you want to run the as, as little as possible so we're gonna wait use it for a minute and i'll see you when everything's done all right so we just finished with the blue compound which means the disc should be hopefully 100% done gonna go ahead clean it off and we can go ahead and take a look at the final result and the disc is done now uh, i think the uh it's actually in really good condition to be honest uh yeah uh, to be honest this game wasn't in bad condition to begin with like it, it didn't have any deep scratches so i'm sure that just the white buffing pad and the white compound would have, would have done the trick but yeah i just wanted to show you what would happen if you were to use uh perhaps a worse disc would be way better for this because as you guys can see we have now this this burned in layer behind the uh the little layer that we were dealing with 
which is uh, which is gone but there's is if you have a very powerful light you can definitely see these scratches over here once again it's not noticeable with just normal light so it will be fine i'm sure the game will work either way we're gonna go ahead pop it into the into the 360 but my point was that you can only use the uh this guy the number one compound if you really want the game to be pristine condition and only do that if the game is in a pretty bad condition but either way let's go ahead test this game move on to our last example all right as you guys can see madden 07 works perfectly fine let's go ahead put it back in the case and then move on to uh call of duty for modern warfare okay so i got modern warfare out and as you guys can see this one definitely has a very very uh, obvious problem and that is these circular scratches now these guys are very difficult to remove to be honest but you can definitely uh, make sure that they're not as visible luckily these don't seem to be too deep either way we're going to do the same thing as with all the other discs pop it in with just the white jfj compound we're not going to use the uh, number one polish or, or the blue stuff we got the original buffing pad back in here let's go ahead screw this in like so like i said with the first game make sure it's not too tight make sure it's not too loose you don't want the game to be flying off but you also don't want the game to crack which at which point you have a bigger issue than uh, originally because a cracked game is uh well way more useless than a scratched one. Oh, okay and we're gonna go ahead and use just as much compound as before maybe just a little bit less but either way it should do, it should do the job boom put it in for two minutes and i will see you guys when it's done all right, and as you guys can see, it's probably the best copy we've got all day. Just actually took out the uh, game that I was talking about, Modern Warfare. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the JFJ Easy Pro, see if it works. Sorry, we're going to put it in the Xbox 360, test it, make sure it works. And then uh, this I will actually not be listed for a little while because we've got to move these stickers. And if we're going the extra mile to refurbish a game, we got to take the stickers off the case. You know, we're already going this far. Might as well just do the job properly. So let's go ahead, pop this guy in here. And uh, it should work. I'm fairly confident. I do always make sure that I test my games before I refurbish them just because I, I know which games are not going to work after I test them again. And I know which games will work. Uh, and yeah, it's just the most efficient system that I found. But either way, let's go ahead, uh, see if it works, and we can go ahead and conclude this video. And there we go. Modern Warfare 4 works perfectly fine. And we're going to go ahead, take it out, put it back in the case, and then this case needs to be... Uh, cleaned up a little bit more which will happen on a later day and there we go hopefully i was able to help you out with this entire process and hopefully answered any sort of questions that you might have had about how i fix up the scratches from my games and how you can do the same now if you're just trying to fix a couple games from your personal collection or you're just trying to sell you know maybe like i don't know 10 15 games on ebay uh, this might not be the best solution for you to be honest this machine is like two three hundred bucks especially if you live in canada you have to add a hundred dollars for shipping it's just it's quite expensive so you want to make sure you're going to be able to pay off the machine by just fixing up the games be smart with your money make sure that you are doing your research another thing you want to keep in mind if you are interested in purchasing this machine is that the learning curve is extremely insane now it took me about i would say one or two months to figure out how this machine properly works it took me a whole bunch of just materials to get the machine worn in and then on top of that, I constantly having issues that popped up. Now, I was able to fix some of the more common issues, and I did make a video about that, which will be one of the top links in the description. So do make sure you do watch that video if you are looking to get one of these, or if you recently did buy a GFJ Easy Pro and you know, you're struggling with it, that video should help you out quite a bit. Otherwise, that will be it for today. Like I said, hopefully I was able to answer any sort of your questions, but if I didn't, drop them down below. I'll make sure to answer them as soon as possible. I have been refurbishing video games for over half a year now. I've done hundreds upon hundreds of games here on the channel, and we have a huge, huge video game reselling challenge coming up. So make sure you do stay tuned for that, but that'll be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, comment any sort of questions you have, or if you have any sort of advice that I might have not mentioned in today's video, let me know down below in the comments. I would love to give you guys suggestions. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.